Congratulations! If this is your first time using an FPGA-based SD series console, you are about to experience a wealth of flexibility and audio quality. This video-based Getting Started guide is designed as a simple introduction to the SD series. We hope it makes you want to delve deeper into this online program and the console itself. This introduction is broken down into the following sections. 1. Rack I.O. 2. Work Surface Orientation 3. Basic Work Surface Connections 4. Session Structure and Configuration 5. Suggested User Options 6. Basic Channel Control 7. Basic Output Control and 8. Dual Solo Buses The standard SD9 system comes inclusive with a D-Rack. This rack frame can be used as a stage floor rack or fitted with optional 19-inch rack ears and rack mounted. The D-Rack provides 32 mic or line inputs from stage and can have up to 16 outputs in the following formats. Line out, AES out or Aviom outputs. The SD9 can have up to two D-Racks connected to the work surface. Each connection is a single Cat5 that can be run up to 100 meters from the surface. More about this is covered later in this startup guide. It is also possible to connect standard MADI-based Digico rack frames to the surface on the provided single MADI connection. Alternatively, this can be used for recording. Please see basic connection section of this video for details on this option. The SD9 work surface is made up of 24 assignable faders which are divided into two sections of 12. Either side of the fader trays are fader bank assign buttons. The left-hand side buttons control the first 12 faders and the right-hand bank buttons control the second 12 faders. These are clearly indicated as two blocks of 12. The fader bank buttons quickly assign the faders in blocks of 12 making it possible for the user to swiftly move between all the channel and output faders. Each bank has its own dedicated LCD scribble strip that displays information about the faders currently assigned to each bank. Located above the fader bank buttons is the screen assign button. There are three of these buttons on the console work surface. Two are located on the fader tray and one can be found in the upper section, indicated by master screen. These buttons allow the operator to quickly assign that section to the large TFT display. Directly above each fader is a mute and multi-function channel select button. Don't panic though, as in normal mode, this button is always defaulted as the fader solo button. You'll notice there is an LCD function button. This button provides access to the other features of the channel select buttons, and these are explained in more detail later in this video. The LCD scribble strip display provides clear indication of the channel each fader is controlling. Directly above the LCD is a dedicated multi-segment LED meter. Moving to the upper panel, you will notice a large TFT touchscreen. This screen allows accurate feedback of the input channels, output channels and master section functions. There is a single row of rotary encoders directly beneath the screen. They can be assigned by touching the screen or by using the conveniently placed quick select buttons on the left-hand side of the screen. These buttons quickly assign the desired parameter to the encoders and buttons. Screen scroll can also be used to step between rotary controls. On the right-hand side of the screen, 
you'll find the channel processing controls. This area of the console allows comprehensive control of the assigned channel. The labeling of each control should be familiar to any analog or digital console user. The final control we're going to focus on in this section is the touch and turn rotary and button. In the master section screen view, these can be assigned to any rotary parameter simply by touching them on the screen. Once touched, the rotary and button control the assigned parameter. This includes controlling the integrated wave sound grid option. The other section of the console includes snapshots, including next and previous, master level and solo levels, headphones and talkback, screen, lights and USB. The SD9 can be specified with either single or dual PSUs. These supplies are located internally on the rear of the console and if fitted with dual PSU, they are hot swappable. The local I.O. connections on the SD9 are found on the back panel and are clearly labelled. Mic line 1 to 8 line output 1 to 8, stereo AES inputs 1 and 2, stereo AES outputs 1 and 2. There are also connections for two D-Racks. As you look at the rear panel, the right-hand connection is D-Rack 1 and the left-hand connection is D-Rack 2. The third external I.O. option is a 56 I.O. compatible MADI connection that can be used for recording or for further Digico I.O. expansion. The keyboard and mouse connection are found on the lower rear section and it is strongly recommended that these are connected at all times the console is in operation. Next to these connections is the VGA output for a dedicated overview screen and network connection for remote control and mirroring. How these can be used is fully detailed in the basic connection section of this video. We have covered the basics, so let's get started. Make sure you have the desired D-Racks and keyboard connected to the console before you begin. Follow this explanation along with the on-screen guide. Switch on the console with the rear-located PSU switch. Once the console has started, press the master screen button. This will bring the master section to the screen view. On the master screen view, you will see a top row of buttons. Using the touch screen, press the file button. This will expand down the screen with several options, including loading and saving sessions. If you don't have a session to load, then please press session structure. This is where you can configure the busing structure of the console to meet your requirement. When the session structure panel is open, you will notice a large default all button. This button is recommended to ensure any historical settings are removed from the console and your session. Input channels. The number is fixed to 48. The SD9 is a very powerful small console and can deliver 48 full flexi channels. Each of these can be either dual mono inputs or complete stereo channels. If comparing to other consoles, this is equal to 96 channels of full processing. AUX and GROUP buses. Busing can be user-defined. There are 16 flexi buses that can be allocated between mono and stereo. Just like the channels, all 16 user-defined buses can be stereo. This is equal to 32 buses on almost any other console. To adjust the values, simply touch the desired bus and use the touch and turn control to increase or reduce the current bus count. A convenient resource counter is located at the bottom of the panel, showing the number of remaining buses and processing channels. In addition to the user-defined buses, 
you have a master bus that can be either stereo or LCR and a 12 by 8 output matrix. Once you are happy with the busing configuration, press the restructure button. After your session has configured, it is recommended you save your session as instructed to do so. The operation of the SD9 can be customized to suit your preference or the type of job it is being used for. The master screen section of the video explains more on the options and settings, but in the meantime, here's a short list of suggested options to set. On the Surface tab, enable Auto Cancel Second Function. Also on the Surface tab, switch on Bank Switch Assign Screen. On the Solos tab, both Solo Assigns AUX to Faders and Solo Assigns Channel should be switched on. And finally, enable status indicators and system alerts in the status tab.